Um, so let's take two on that. So welcome officially, second second go everyone. Uh, so maybe let's start with a quote. It's a nice one from Martin Luther King, which leads us nicely into the lesson. So um, Iona, will you read it for us? Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate can drive out hate. Only love can do that. Seems kind of obvious, doesn't it? <laughs> and yet um, humanity has quite consistently tried the, uh, the, the opposite. Yeah. Tried to drive darkness out with darkness, mm. hatred with hatred, and um, it hasn't worked. Yeah. Yet the ego continues with with its insanity. And um, darkness is just another name for unawareness. You're unaware of uh, of your true awareness. <sighs> And this manifests in various ways, fear being a big one, guilt, sin, attack thoughts, anger, fear, hatred, jealousy, and so on. These are all forms of unawareness. So only the light of true awareness, or awareness of what you really are, and the love that you feel can drive the darkness of fear out of your mind. Only that's going to work. Martin Luther King. So um, there's a little uh, bonus recording for you if you want to listen to that. It's worth listening to about overcoming fear. And uh, let's get into the lesson then. So we're back to another series of original lessons. Reviews over. So this one is very simple, very straightforward. I am the light of the world. One of my, it's one of my favorites. I mean, it's just a, just so simple, direct. Just got a, a really nice feeling to it. So um, what I've done again is I've done a paragraph, the original. So I suggest reading that. And then there's an alternative translated version below that. Uh, so then read it as a second kind of review of it. And then, um, and then we'll discuss it. So, Ayana, do you want to kick it off? Who is the light of the world except, except love's extension? This right. then... Oh, yeah. no. Just, Hang on. You're just, just going to read the alternative. Yeah. I, think, I think read both. It's, it's, it's yeah, just yeah. Who is the light of the world except God's son? This then is merely a statement of the truth about yourself. It is the opposite of a statement of pride of arrogance or of self-deception. It does not describe the self-concept you have made. It does not refer to any of the characteristics with which you have endowed your idols. It refers to you as you were created by God. It simply states the truth. Who is the true awareness of the world except love's extension? This then is merely a statement of the truth about yourself. It is the opposite of a statement of pride, of arrogance, or of self-deception. It does not describe the self-concept you have made. It does not refer to any of the characteristics with which you have endowed your idols. It refers to you as you were extended by love. It simply states the truth. Hmm. Any thoughts on that? Well, at 2.30 this morning, I got up and I was reading this lesson um, and it calmed me right down. And, and then I made a cup of tea and I had to giggle about, you know, going out and say, good morning, I'm the light of the world. And people go, oh, I. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, very good. Uh, mm -hmm. you know and how how that is received in the um in the in the egoic world and yeah. the world 
Yeah. Well, as he says here, you know, mean a statement of truth, but um, the ego is going to going to interpret it differently. Yes, of course. Think, oh, who are you? You know, the light of the world. <laughs> oh, aren't we full of ourselves? <laughs> who are you to think that you are the light you, of the world? The light of the world, you know. Um, only, there was only one light of the world. That was Jesus, and that's. And look what happened world. to him. <laughs> Look what happened to him. Yeah, you better be careful. Yes. <laughs> get nailed up for that, going around saying that sort of thing. I mean, I was, it was, it made me laugh. And it, and as the storm was shrieking around. And then, mm. um, so it does not refer to any of the characteristics with which you have endowed your idols. So I might have an idol who is outside of me saying that's the light I need to follow in him or her or hmm. that Mother Mary standing in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. What, whatever you think, First, that's, that's going to save you. It's going to yeah. bring you, and you know, this, this happens in many ways. Uh, it's going to yeah. bring you some kind of happiness and some kind of uh, fulfillment and, and an identity. And like underneath all of that, there's identification, as you say. It does not describe the self-concept you have made. Remember, this is all a self-concept. Everything in the external world, the idols we made, is a projection of our false self-concept. Yeah. So now how we perceive these things is critical. Because if we perceive them from the false, false self-concept, we identify with them, attach to them, then the false self-concept is in charge. That's what's governing our mind. I could really, I could really see that because I never had a shiny red car before. It's a shiny red van, and now it's got a fucking great dent in it. <laughs> and you're like, I'm so like, oh my god, I've had this thing a week. Really? Yeah. Okay. The last car, Chris threw a stick for his dog, and it dented it. And now his bloody house blown down on it. What a what a perfect lesson. Thanks. <laughs> you gotta go. Clearly, what is it telling you? Don't get attached to your stuff. It's not true. It's not real. It's an idol. I was working that out for myself this morning, but I I, I wasn't raging, but I was oh God, really? Oh. But what a perfect lesson, because don't attach to the stuff. It's it's not permanent, it's not real. It can be just it can be damaged and destroyed so easily, can't it? It's true. And I mean, look, what a, what a fragile self concept if you attach your mind to that. Well, I was thinking last night as the gale was just shrieking and the whole thing was shaking. I thought I'm I'm attached to human existence. Why, if I was going to be wiped out tonight? Why would I? Why would I have any resistance to that? Well, it was very useful um, talking so deeply yesterday about the lesson. You know, this oh. attachment to everything, including my ability to breathe and be and walk oh. on the yeah, my human life. Yeah. And then last night, the noise and the shaking and the oh. the rain. Everything. We started singing. Oh. And we didn't sing Onward Christian Soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it, it, you know, literally you were, you were in the uh, same, same situation Jesus describes in the parable of the rock. Remember we talked about that? Yeah. Rains came and the wind blew and uh, the, the man who built his house on, on the rock, the, the house stood. So it's like symbolic really. Just have, have faith through all the storms. Yeah. And if it really was your last night, then why are you, why, why are you attached? Well, yippee, I'm out of here. <laughs> You'd be rejoicing. It's like this is freedom. No more storms. No more you know, cars getting dented. Uh, no more whatever, ego dramas. It's all, it's, it's, it's all done and I can go back to heaven. But we still do have a... It's useful to notice. There's still this attachment to the human life and the human form. And, and of course, the other forms that seem to go with that. Yeah. Cars and whatever it is. Money, clothes, cars, 
stuff. And you only really notice that when you get tested on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so something's got damaged. No, no, I wasn't attached to my car. Okay, really? Let's just check that. Because <laughs> if, if your car gets damaged and there's a, a negative reaction, then there's still attachment on it if you're honest with yourself. So it's uh, it's all useful. Um, things things can seem to be you know, in the in the in the first stage of of this awakening, the development of of, of trust. Jesus talks about uh, you know things things can be seen to be uh, taken away, and uh, actually it's just merely their their lack of value that's being recognised. So. When things get taken away, you, you have to remind yourself, okay, that what's the lesson? It's just teaching me that this world has no value. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, that lesson again. <laughs> I thought I got that, <laughs> but uh, well, maybe not quite. So this lesson, I'm um, the light of the world, is the is the um, the opposite of any idea of self self deception. Hmm. Yeah. Because you're I not have... attaching. No, you, I'm just specifically saying, you know, uh -huh. it does not describe the self concept you have made. Yeah. It's it's yeah. just purely a, a pointer to this light or this awareness yeah. that you are um, beyond all illusions, beyond the world. It's just pure formless awareness. Mm -hmm. You are that awareness. Yeah. Simply states the truth. Very simply, very directly. You know, I am the light of the world. Few words, Beautiful. but uh, so powerful if you if you accept them. Okay, happy with. Number one? Yeah. All right. Moving uh, swiftly on to number two. Uh, if I can scroll down. Where's my cursor gone now? There we go. I don't know why my cursor is not functioning today. Okay, so number two. Uh, John, if you read that for us. The ego. Today's idea is the epitome of self-glorification. But the ego does not understand humility, taking it for self-debasement. Humility consists of accepting your role in salvation and in taking no other. It is not humility to insist you cannot be the light of the world if that is the function of God assigned to you. It is only arrogance that would assert this function cannot be for you. And arrogance is always of the ego. Hmm. Okay. Do you want to read uh, the alternative one? <coughs> to the ego, today's idea is the epitome of self-glorification. But the ego does not understand humility, mistaking it for self-debasement. Humility consists of accepting your role in salvation and in taking no other. It is not humility to insist you cannot be the true awareness of the world if that is the function love, pure form of awareness assigned to you. It is only arrogance that would assert this function cannot be for you and arrogance is always of the ego. Okay. Um, I, like, I like the use of the word true awareness there, actually. Hmm. Cannot be the true awareness you know, in, in place of the light of the world. Hmm. Well, light is very poetic, isn't it? But again, people could go, well, what does that actually mean? <laughs> the light, what, am I visualizing a light? The yeah. Light? Light implies some kind of physical, you know, we perceive as light in this world. It's not referring to to uh, light in the, in the physical at all. So really, it's an awareness. True awareness is the, is the light of the world. So this is the uh, awareness that perceives the world correctly. This is this is the reinterpretation of the world through the awareness of oneness. This is the real world that we're now seeing. You know, it's all it's all just different language to point to the same the same thing a reinterpreted world there's some very yeah, i think i have to pay attention to the words here because 
The hmm. ego does not understand humility, hmm. mistaking it for self-debasement. Hmm. So what we're saying here is that humility is acceptance of one's role in salvation and taking no other. As the ego mistakes that for no. For self-debasement. Self-debasement. So to the ego, it's going to be like, no, 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 that's, that's uh, self-debasement. My self-concept can't, uh, can't handle that to, to be uh, just part of this, part of salvation, part of this at one moment, to give up everything else, take no other. And you guys gonna gonna say no? No, that's 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 not worthy of you. That's that's self debasement. You you're better than that. Mm -hmm. And then paradoxically, it's also gonna say when you say I'm the light of the world, that's the epitome of self glorification. Yeah. Like, who are you to like? <coughs> really? Who who are you? You're not the light of the world. You're just a person. Don't don't get delusions of grandeur here. Yeah? So he's giving us, you know, the ego's perception of this is, is not is not going to be favorable obviously because if it accepts it you know, i'm the light of the world i'm the true awareness of the world and and it's in me it's not anywhere else it's it's uh, it's it's undoing this awareness will undo the the false self-concept entirely how is it that arrogance would assert this function cannot be for you Last sentence is it's only Aaron would assert hmm. this cannot be for you. Hmm. Saying because it's it's actually saying Oh you're 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 not good enough for this. It's not really arrogance. Mistaking it for self debasement. Yeah, but but you see the ego's confused. So it's 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 gonna it's gonna mistake this surrender, this humility, for self debasement, and then a statement like a light of the world is gonna misinterpret and say, well, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's gonna mistake it for self glorification, and he's saying, well, this is really only arrogance. I mean, who are you? You are the light of the world. You are this extension of pure formless awareness. If you deny that, you're denying God's will. You're denying the truth. Which is arrogant. Yeah. Enormously arrogant. You know, who are you to say that God's will is, is, is not his will and this, this isn't true? No, no, I've got other ideas about the truth. So I'm not the light of the world. He's arrogant. Because you are. It's just it's a given. You know, that awareness that you have is God-given awareness and you cannot undo it. So the, the ego's arrogance is to deny what's, you know, what's true, what's obvious. And then say, no, this this is, this function isn't for you. I'm going to give you another one, whatever that may be. And it, it obviously makes something up. Oh well, you know, you're going to be a gives you a role in the world, um, gives you a, a, a way to enhance your false self concept. You know, go do this, uh, be successful in this, make money, get status, get money, get power. You know, this is its replacement to being the light of the world, and that's just arrogant. And sometimes that plays out, you know, people, people can, uh, can be obviously arrogant, you know, let's say take a Donald Trump type character, you know, it's so puffed up and full of himself, um, obvious, you know, people say, okay, well, you know, it's big ego, well, that's obvious, but what's, what's more subtle is other forms of it. So what happens if you're a victim? No, oh, no, no, I'm a victim. I'm really depressed. Well, that's also arrogant, equally arrogant because you, you're denying the light of the world in another way. Attaching to a false self-concept is arrogant. Because you're saying, I know better than God. I can do a better job. I've created myself, and, and this self is, is way, way better than, than that God's self, than the one self, Christ's self. And um, so I will stick to this. This, this is the self I choose. And, and this is arrogant denial of the self that's being created for us. That is, you know, perfect, whole, and complete, which we simply have to accept in order to be truly happy. 
Does that make sense now? Yeah, yeah. I think what's making sense is the the use of the word arrogance. I mean, to deny God and take oppression as a root is also arrogance. Yes, I hadn't seen it in that sort of way actually. Because it's it's this crazy ego idea. No, I can do it better. Yeah, you know, I'll, do it, I'll do it my way, and um, my way is better, better than God's way. That really is the arrogance in which the ego is based. No, 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 no. We have perfection, but we don't want that. We throw that away, and uh, we'll do it our way. And then our way is a disaster, but we're so uh, wedded to our way that we don't want to see it. But actually, we, we're living in a dream of death and disaster that's really just not working. We, we arrogantly cling to it because um, we don't want to give up the self-concept. We want to try and make our self-concept work. No, 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 if I just try another way, <laughs> another maybe another version of the self-concept will work maybe uh, another lifetime will work uh, you know I'll get it right I'll get it right uh, in a few years this is this is the arrogance of the ego and and really humility is saying look just give it up <laughs> give it up that this isn't going to work ever and so accept that you know I have one role and one function and no other and that that is to correct my perception here which is the true awareness or the light of the world, to be the light of the world while I'm here, to correct my perception, see the real world, and, and transcend the world. That's my function. It's my only function. So you're not saying even do anything. What are you saying? I'm the light of the world. Just just change your perception. You know, your, your only function is to, uh, to change your perception and, and bring this awareness into the world. Mm. Yep, okay, that's good. Makes sense. <coughs> okay. All right, happy to. Do you want to give a little summary of that? Paragraph two? Yeah, yeah. Um, the ego would have us believe that we are different, but. Our truth is that we are true, true awareness or the life of the world. And that cannot be denied. Hmm. And the ego is going to tell you that this idea is the epitome of self-glorification. And... Um, it's, it's also going to make the mistake of mistaking the humility of surrendering to, to this light as self-debasement. So it's very confused about its attitude towards us. Yeah. Did you, did you find any of that coming up when you, when you read the lesson or not? Or like, who am I to say I'm the light of the world? Uh, I, I did the first time I read it, when I first came across it, but yeah, we, we've read this kind of paragraph before and settled easier now. Mm. And I think the words true awareness do help, actually, mm. in this case. Yeah, I think it just makes it more um, tangible. Okay, so what's, what's he referring to? You know, light to the world is very flowery and poetic. It's lovely. But what does it actually mean? Yeah. It means awareness, okay? Well, the true awareness. So the true awareness of the world is corrected perception, is the real world. You're seeing the real world, to use you know some of the other language. And that's your only function, it's just to change your perception. You change the world when you change your perception. It brings it right down to, to the very like foundation of what you need to do, is change your perception. From there, everything everything changes. Mm. You change the world when you change your perception of the world because the world is in your perception. It exists in your mind as a projection and then you perceive it as real and so that projection perception mechanism keeps you locked in to keep making it real in your mind. You must change your perception and that's your only function. Really, really simple. Change your perception of it. 
doing exactly this kind of mind training, just looking at everything differently, correcting your perception, and then from corrected perception, you have um, a changed self-concept. Self-concept uh, must change if you change your perception, because what's perceiving? The self-concept's perceiving. Okay, happy with that? Yep, that's good for me. All right, so moving on to number three. I think it's Sue. True humility requires that you accept today's idea because it is God's voice which tells you it is true. Mm -hmm. This is a beginning step in accepting your real function on earth. It is a giant stride toward taking your rightful place in salvation. It is a positive assertion of your right to be saved and an acknowledgement of the power that is given you to save others. <clears throat> okay, and then maybe as you read the second one, we'll just stop at each, each sentence and unpack it. How about that? True humility requires that you accept today's idea because it is love's voice which tells you it is true. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Just to accept that voice. It's telling you it's true, it feels right. And so surrender to that and let go of the ego's resistance. Yeah. Okay, next one. Okay, this is a beginning step in accepting your real function on earth. So I get that. It's like the first thing we have to do is accept the idea. Hmm. Because an idea changes our mind, it changes our self concept, and this changes our function. Just, just a, a simple idea about who you are. You know that, that's what this is all about. Know thyself. Yeah. But it's a giant stride toward taking your rightful place in salvation. Just to accept this. How many people do you know? If you said, you know, you are the light of the world. Most people, even people seemingly on a spiritual path, would probably have some resistance to that, wouldn't they? Mm. Go, oh, no, yeah, I'm not sure about that. No, 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 not not me. Can't be the light of the world. You know, maybe Jesus, or you know, if they're not spiritual at all. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, I've no idea. Like, are you mad? This is just crazy, crazy language. So it's accepting it for yourself, which is why these are in the first person. I am the light of the world. It's an I am statement. I am that I am. It's like being being a, a a beacon of the truth, isn't it? And and seeing seeing the truth in everybody. Hmm. Because if you're the light of the world, then they must be too. Yeah. It's inevitable. You have to if you accept it for yourself, you must accept it for everyone. It's a positive assertion of your right to be saved. Saying, yeah, I have every right to be saved. I can change my perception. I can change my mind. I can I can save myself from the ego's dark thought system. And uh, it's an acknowledgement of the power that is given you to save others. So that light, that awareness, will save others. If you hold that awareness and you extend it to them, then that awareness is, is what will save them as well. And none of that is heritage, that's the truth. What did you say, Sue? Is that, is that a bird in the background? Yes. Quite a, <laughs> quite a loud bird. Yeah. <laughs> Joining in on the session. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, so happy with, uh, you want to give a little summary of number three? Um, he's telling us that um, true humility is accepting accepting that we are love's voice in this world and that is that's a major step towards our salvation once we've accepted that hmm. that we're the, we're the light of the world and so is everybody else hmm. And what's in us has the power to save us as well as everyone else. There's nothing that light cannot do. So you're accepting your true power and uh, glory. And when you say it, you know, I'm the light of the world, it does does have that impact. It's like it's it's a powerful statement. It just kind of sits there and you're like, hmm, yeah. that's it really feels very comforting, reassuring, powerful. So we'll explore those feelings in the meditation. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay, so number four, and then we'll go into the practice. You will want to think, okay. You will want to think about this idea as often as possible today. It is the perfect answer to all illusions and therefore to all temptation. It brings all the images you have made about yourself to the truth and helps you depart in peace, unburdened and certain of your purpose. Yep, it's the perfect answer to all the illusions I have about myself to, um, to, to. Temptation. And therefore, to all temptation, all illusions and all temptations that I might have about myself. Hmm. But take the car as an example. I mean, that's a temptation to attach your mind to a false image and create and perpetuate a false self concept. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Which is just an image, it's an idol in your mind. <coughs> All the images you made about yourself to the truth helps you depart in peace, unburdened, and certain of your purpose. No red car. <laughs> well, car, car with the, in the end, car with a dent or car with no dent, who cares? So what? Yeah, really. I, 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 I agree with you. If it gets you from A to B, then that's all that's really required, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but we're attached to form. You see, it's attached. Oh no, how it looks. That's important. Yeah. And it just helps you depart. Interesting, he uses depart. Depart. Right? You decouple yourself. You you depart yourself from, from the illusions. Yes. In peace. And ultimately you're going to depart from the whole world. But it's you know little baby steps. Each little thought of egoic thought that you depart from. You are um, facilitating the ultimate departure from the entire world, the entire illusion. To depart from it all in peace, unburdened and certain of your purpose. Let it all go, in other words. Find peace uh, and just be unburdened, like I'm the light of the world. I don't like all the stuff, the clutter that we, we fill our lives with. When you're just pure light, mm -hmm. pure awareness, that's it. That's all you are. And yet we fill our minds with, and our lives with clutter. No, no, I'm this. No, no, I'm attached to, attached to all kinds of objects and, um, and things. And, and, and all of it's in vain. I mean, it's interesting. I went to, I went to um, sort of a little memorial party for uh, my uncle's wife last year. And she, she, she just collect. She was a hoarder. She just collected so much stuff. The house was just packed with clutter, 
And she had jewelry, like, can I tell you, like so much. It was all laid out on a table. It was like a, a long table, like maybe five meters long and a couple of meters wide. And the whole table was filled with her jewelry. <laughs> I kid you not. And you're just like, oh my God, talk about a false self concept. And you know, then her body's gone and the jewelry just sits there. And you go like, what is it all for? Mm -hmm. Just to perpetuate a self false self concept while she was alive. And then all the stuff left over. And uh, you know, when death is death is a great reminder. Like, well, so what what was all that stuff for? Don't take any of it with you. It's all it's all meaningless in truth. Her, you know, her awareness now is not physical. None of that has any meaning at all. Jewelry only is, has meaning if you identify yourself with the body. Well, if you're not a body, then like why the why the identification? But you see how it works. The ego's so subtle. It's like, oh no, jewelry, you know, whatever it is, that now makes the body real, and now that's part of your your self concept as, as a body. It's very uh, subtle and insidious. It's always, I was going to try and get you to do that. Whereas the if you just the next say, um, about the body, isn't it? Oh, it's a, it's a monster tonight. I'm warning you. Sixteen paragraphs. <laughs> so. Oh my God. Uh, have, have, a, have a rest. Have a rest this afternoon. A couple of hours. A long that. That's that's nuts. I'll be okay. <laughs> well, we'll 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 try and uh, speed it up and get through it. This Body is a means of communication. Yeah, but it's a good one. There's a yeah. lot of a lot okay. of stuff in there. Awake for that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So have a rest this afternoon if you need yeah. to. <clears throat> okay. Happy with uh, number four. Yeah. Can you give a little summary of that? I need to ask. Um, I've already moved on. You want to think about this idea. It's perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. All my illusions about my little red car and the temptation to have it all shiny and perfect brings it all into the truth and, and the knowledge that I will depart from all of that illusion embracing peace without burden and certain of my purpose hmm. which feels really good just yeah it's all right then you, then, then there's there's no fragility in that self uh -huh. in the christ there's no fragility because it's yeah. it's invulnerable to whatever's happening in, in this world if you identify uh -huh. with the stuff mm -hmm. of the world yeah. Oh, look at how vulnerable it is. You just have a storm. Oh, something blows off. Crack into the car. Oh, now I'm upset. Actually, do you know, I wasn't. Hmm? My neighbor came out moaning and groaning. Oh, Iona, Iona, no, no, no. And I thought he was going to tell me about the terrible thing that had affected him. And he showed me what had happened to my car. I really didn't care that much. But I think I've blown it up in my mind because I'm tired. Hmm. It came. It came subsequently. Yeah, it was like the first time he threw something at my car. Yeah. Yeah. I just love. Yeah. Anyway, it's his karma. Yeah. What's interesting is it's just how applicable these lessons are. They're amazing. Because life happens and then like a situation like that happens and you can apply it and go, okay, well, this, this lesson is a perfect antidote to the ego's misinterpretation of it. So that's why the, the, you know, the workbook is brilliant. This is application to, to these uh, practical life situations to learn these profound lessons as we go. And that's, that's the whole purpose. You're the light of the world. You're the, you are this awareness and you are correcting your perception you know, as you go, as you go through life. That's the purpose of it. Okay, so any questions on uh, on this? We'll go into some practice now. Um, so the rest is pretty much practice. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll guide you through this. So um, if you want to... Uh, Get into meditation posture. Happy to go straight into it? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. All right, so just making yourself comfortable, sitting uh, feet shoulder width apart. Back straight. Cup your hands in your lap, close your eyes. And start off by taking a nice deep breath in through the nose. Breathing in through the lower stomach, blowing it up like a light filled balloon. You visualize light, you can imagine golden or white light flowing into the stomach, clenching your sphincter muscle, muscle used to contract the flow of urine or squeeze the last drops out. So lock the energy in. It's a root lock in yoga. And draw this light energy up the spine into your heart center. Breathing into the heart space, like you filling your heart up with light. If you don't visualize well, just it's a feeling of light, a lightness of your being. You're breathing it into every pore, every cell, every muscle of your body, every part of your mind, every fiber of your being. Draw it up into the upper chest up the spine into the head, the crown of the head, pausing at the top of the inhale. Another sip of air in and in this open spacious awareness, this light. Let's bring to mind any thoughts, any emotions, sensations attached to that body sensations. Notice them, observe them, if it's not feeling happy, peaceful. Just remind yourself that I am the light of the world. Breathe that light in to the darkness. The darkness is just unawareness of the light, unawareness of who you really are. So you breathe it in, and in the face of awareness of the light, or unawareness or darkness must dissipate. So you feel it dissipating, you feel the light in your mind, you feel an inspiration, you feel stirring in your heart perhaps some peace, some joy, smile. Remind yourself, I am the light of the world. And that is my only function. If you prefer the alternative version of that, I am the true awareness of the world. In other words, my awareness is corrected awareness. I perceive everything correctly. From the reference point of oneness, that is my only function here. That is why I am here. Tell yourself very firmly that this is the case. I am the light of the world, I am the true awareness of the world, that is my only function. There's no other function, that is why I'm here. The only reason I'm here, my true purpose, my higher purpose. Breathe it all in one more time. Accept it. It's a deep acceptance of this truth. That you are the light of the world and it's only arrogance. Ego's arrogance that would deny this. Because it is the function given you by God, love, pure form of awareness itself. So who are you to deny the function that's being given to you by your creator or source? So now you're just going to blow all of the resistance away. Any ideas to the contrary which show up as little scraps of fear, maybe self-doubt, worry, attack thoughts, guilt, and so on. Whatever you noticed when we started this little exercise, just going to blow it all away with the breeze of your breath. Imagine you're letting it all go, blowing it away like a dark cloud. 
leaving you. Leaving your body, leaving your energy system, leaving your mind clear. You are in the true awareness, in the light of the world. So just rest for a few moments in this light. It helps you can imagine golden or white light shining through your mind. You're in the blue sky, no clouds, just perfect blue sky with no clouds. Let the light just shine through, blazing through this true awareness, the light of your source shining in your mind, bringing you peace and happiness, helping you to depart from this world, decouple your mind from this world in peace, unburdened and certain of your purpose. And as you stay in the light for a, a few moments, think about these statements. I am the light of the world. That is my only function. That is why I'm here. Think about that. Reinterpret it as I am the true awareness of the world. I am the pure formless awareness. And this is my only purpose, my only function. Let a few related thoughts come to you as you just observe your breath, breathing in and breathing out through your nose. Just observe. Subtle flow of air flowing in and then naturally flowing out and just let that happen and observe the subtle sensations in the nostrils and in the area just below your nose, between your nose and your upper lip to bring you into the present moment. So just present awareness and then let whatever related ideas come to you. You find your mind wandering thinking obviously irrelevant or distracting thoughts, just bring it back, reminding yourself, I am the light of the world. I am the true awareness of the world. There is no other awareness. This is my only awareness. I am that awareness. That awareness is me. There is no separation between me and that awareness. So I must be that awareness. I am the true awareness of the world. This awareness reinterprets everything I see with my body's eyes, everything I perceive in this world. So that is why I am the light or the true awareness of the world. This is my only function, to perceive truly, to correct my perception, to let the Holy Spirit, the awareness of oneness, perceive everything in this world for me to see it with fresh eyes this is why I'm here this is my only purpose and my only function I accept it fully now as the light of the world I am the light of the world I am the true awareness of the world repeat this a few times to yourself so it starts to sink in going deep into your mind let it penetrate into the dark corridors of your mind where there's still lurking belief in the ego that you're not this awareness, that you're something else, that you are a body, that you value things in the world over this awareness. Any of those kinds of thoughts and emotions come in, just notice them casually. You can afford to laugh at them. Breathe the light into them wherever you notice them. Wherever they show up <clears throat> in your body, often these things seem to have a physical location. Show up as tightness, tension, not in your stomach perhaps. Just breathe into that. Imagine you breathing this infinite light, golden or white light. If you visualize, visualize that. Maybe it's just an expansive feeling of light coming into your body. Every pore, every cell, every muscle is in the light. You smile because you are the light of the world. Say to yourself, I am the light of the world. I am the true awareness of the world. This is my only function. This is why I'm here. 
to be this, to accept this fully and be the light of the world, the true awareness of the world. So right now, just accept it. Blow everything else away with the breeze of your breath. Letting it all go like dark clouds, just being blown away by the breeze of the true awareness that you are the Holy Spirit, the Holy Breath it's been called, because it just blows away all the darkness. So you stay in the light of your true awareness. Just rest in that awareness. You're in the blue sky beyond the clouds. The brilliant light of your source is shining through your mind. And you just rest here. There's nothing else to do. Nowhere else to go. Nothing else to think about. Any other thoughts are just a distraction. They're just trying to take you back into the clouds to root you to earth. But you or above that, you are not of this world. You are of the light and in the light, and you are there right now in your awareness. So just let go into this awareness fully for the next couple of minutes of deep silence. Nowhere else to go, nothing else to do, nothing else to think about. Just surrender into the awareness that you are the light of the world. Say, I am the light of the world. This is my only function. That is why I'm here. And then just rest. No, no further thoughts are needed. Rest in this awareness. Allow it to arise fully in your awareness. Just enjoy the experience of this awareness. Let peace and love and happiness and joy arise spontaneously in your mind. And just enjoy the experience for the next two minutes or so of deep Silence. If any thoughts arise to seemingly disturb this awareness, notice them and just let them go with the breeze of your breath. Blow them all away to the nothingness they really are. (sighs) 
and just rest in the light. Nothing else to do, nowhere else to go, just be the light of the world that you are. For another minute or two of deep silence. And so gently coming back, this deep state, bring some of your awareness back into the body, into the breath and the senses and the world. And on the count of three, you're going to open your eyes. So breathing in, one, noticing the stomach rise and the chest rise, and the subtle flow of air in through the nostrils. Clenching the sphincter muscle again, locking the energy in, feeling a warm wave of energy rising up the spine into your heart center, on up into your upper back and into the crown of your head, pausing at the top of the inhale again. Notice the subtle sensations, the breath in your nostrils, smile, pause at the top of the inhale. Just scan your mind again, notice any thoughts, any emotions. And any related physical sensations in the body, maybe there's nothing, it's just light, just pure awareness. Appreciate that. Joy it, this is true thought, just this awareness. No subject object thoughts required. Notice how peaceful and blissful it feels. That's the case. Anchor this awareness in, set the intention to stay here. Even while you come back and sense perceptions, this awareness can guide you. This is the light that you are, the light of the world. This light, this awareness will guide all of your perceptions into proper alignment with oneness and will keep you in peace. So it is said, so it is done. If there's anything that's seemingly obstructing this light, any kind of a little scrap of fear, a little bit of contraction, limitation. Do you notice in your mind, notice how it shows up in the body maybe, observe it and then just blow it all away with the breeze of your breath. Exhale, releasing it into the nothingness that it really is. Imagine it's like a dark cloud being blown away. Notice the air flowing out, notice the chest and the stomach suck back in. Pull the lower stomach into the spine so you're completely empty. Pause at the bottom of the exhale. Just noticing the peaceful stillness again, this pure awareness, the light that you are. Say one more time, I am the light of the world. I am the true awareness of the world. This is my only function here. This is why I'm here in this world. 
So now on the count of two, notice the weight of your body pressing down into the chair. Notice your feet touching the ground. Noticing what you're feeling with your hands. Maybe there's a subtle flow of air on your skin. Notice that. Breathe that air in. Notice any smell in your nose. Maybe a subtle taste in your mouth. And notice what you're hearing. Without any attachment, to remind yourself, I am the light of the world. I'm the true awareness. So there's no need to attach to any of these things to make them real in any way, shape, or form. You simply observe them. And notice the peace that comes from this light. Anchor the state in the rest of the afternoon and evening. Carry it with you to help you. You can top yourself up frequently. Jesus recommends you remind yourself about this idea frequently. So try for every hour, even if it's only for a few seconds, just a breath. Hold the breath briefly. I'm the light of the world. This is my only function. This is why I'm here. So it could take as little as 10 seconds. I'm giving you some instructions for doing it in under a minute. And there's also a shorter breath break recording you can listen to, which is uh, just over three minutes uh, to top you up. And uh, we will practice this again in a meditation this evening. So join us this evening at uh, 7.30 UK time. We'll do a quick med. 20 minutes to start, and then we'll go into the uh, into the session, into the uh, reading and discussion of the text. I think. So, uh, thank you, everyone, and uh, Namaste. Thanks for joining. I'll see you a bit later. Thank you, Jono. Thank you.